Hey, good morning. The India Hangout welcomes you. Will you vote for abusive politicians? That's the question we are asking you and asking uh, in general, because given the level of debate, if you want to call it that, that uh, some of the discussions and discourse in Indian politics has now descended to. I'm joined by at Cricketwala, stro stroke Ayaz Memon, and a <laughs> couple of guests from uh, different parts of the country who we're going to come to on our Hangout shortly. Uh, but before that, uh, uh, Ayaz, just a broader sense. We ask this question on every issue. Like, you know, we, yesterday we were talking about are there more uh, celebrities this time around? And now today we're asking is there more abuse this time around? So everything smacks of desperation. It does. I think there are two factors which are leading to this, yeah. or at least the perception that there's yeah. a lot more abuse. Yeah. One is that there's massive media coverage. Mm. So even somebody who's speaking in Azamgar mm. or somewhere else is yeah. now coming into the national limelight, so to speak, right. or the spotlight. Right. Uh, while in the past you won't hear it. Maybe this, these things happened. Yeah. Simultaneously, what has happened is that this election, I think, is the watershed elections, at least in this respect, that it's become extremely competitive and combative. So it's a no holds barred election, mm. and you're finding more and more. You know, it's it's the the nature of the discourse is diatribe mm. or the debate. Mm. It's not logic, it's mm. not well-founded arguments, it's diatribe. Right. So, you know, that's pretty much established. No, but aren't people, I mean, shouldn't logically the politicians concerned be concerned that uh, their image and reputation is at stake? Or is it that uh, this is their normal selves and people, which is their, po which is their voters, also know that this is their normal selves? I think it's a bit of both, uh, Govind, because if you, let me give, just give you a kind of a time frame. Mm. If you look at the 1991 elections, mm. and I've gone and heard Sadhvi Ritambara then, mm. you know, and she was spewing venom mm. in those days. This mm. was just about the Babri Masjid, yeah. uh, you know, building and, up the temple. Yeah, and pre-television. Pre-television. Yeah. So, while there was, you know, some concern that it's getting out of hand, mm. it was, it didn't seem as loud mm. as it is now. Mm. The decibel levels have certainly gone up because of the, you know, mammoth right. media coverage. And it's all getting amplified it's through getting social amplified. media and through hangouts and so on. So we've got two guests, uh, there's Saurav and Prathna. Prathna, you've been standing by for a while. Prathna, let me ask you the straight question. Will you vote for an abusive politician and what do you think of politicians who abuse? Well, uh, see, definitely, as a journalist or as a citizen of the country, I'm definitely not going to vote for someone who is abusive. You know, who doesn't have kind of respect for democracy, who doesn't, who, who, who doesn't have any uh, values, who doesn't uh, give importance to human welfare. I think definitely as a woman, as a citizen of the country and as a journalist, I'm definitely not going to vote for someone who's abusive. And let me tell you one thing. I mean, why are they abusive? We have to, uh, why are they using abusive languages in front of the camera? Because they want to be famous, like uh, Mr. Memon uh, rightly said, you know. Someone from a um, uh, from a small city, from a small town, now getting the national media limelight through uh, uh, obviously a greater platform, and you know using abusive languages. And you know we common people are also to be blamed for this. We love uh, we, we we kind of love this kind of Norton keys where uh, they they come out with some Norton key language with some uh, super dialogue buzzy. And I think uh, we common people are also to be blamed for this. They love. Dialogue Bazi, they love this not and keys as we all know we have so, been seeing a lot of uh, right. social media so, Pratna, war, can, I, uh, can I come in there? You know, uh, you're saying that this dialogue buzzy and not unkey, which is fine. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's fine, but it's 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 fine in the context that uh, you know it's at least not abusive. But when it's abusive, it's it's something different because some of that abuse is uh, I mean, there, it also goes on to threats against life, whether it's meant or not, right? So, is that something you feel is a natural reflection of your your politicians' uh, uh, feelings or desires, or is it only because of the heat of the moment that people are saying? I, I, what's what's your sense? No, uh, when I say dialogue bazi and not unki bazi, I mean abusive languages they use. Okay. I mean, yeah, definitely they want the limelight, and uh, maybe it's not about the you know heat of the moment. Hmm. They are well prepared. They know it very well. You know, yesterday evening, of, uh, you know, Dig Vijay Singh, he came out uh, with a, a, a version saying, I mean, I would like to urge all Hindus of the country not to uh, call Narendra Modi Namo because it's like shameful for all Hindus and for all Indians. I mean, what is this? Yeah. I mean, we have seen uh, uh, we have seen war between uh, Gul Panag and Kiran Khed through social media, through Twitter, saying a 60-year-old buddhi and you know a burger-eating youngsters. I mean, these are very well-prepared statements. These are not heat of the moment. You know, come on, you people okay. are representing us. So you really need to be very, very responsible and a little bit of respect for your voters. Okay. I Got mean, it. if you ask me, 
Yeah. Got it. Got it. Uh, uh, Pratna, hold your thought. Let's let's get Saurav in as well. Saurav, uh, uh, let's ask you the straight question. Will you vote for a abusive politician? And what do you think of abusive politicians? Well, I you know I I, I get what you're saying, but Pratna saying here about about. Uh, the you know the, the idea of views of politicians being you know distasteful and the idea of voting for them being distasteful, but uh, uh, you know I think there's also it's it's also it's also uh, as she said you know it's also so, so contrived that it's 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 almost uh, being seen as uh, as as part of the uh, routine the mantra of uh, uh, politics in India and. Uh, you know, I, I don't. I don't. It's it's just become screechingly high uh, at this instance, uh, largely because of uh, I. I would think in one sense the fact that uh, the news media also, you know, really enjoys this kind of discourse or or at least laps it up because you know it's after all it's 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 really entertainment uh, television right. at uh, super prime <laughs> time. Right. No, but sort of the question is, uh, it might be entertainment, it might be Nautanki, it might be Tamasha, but does this give you, I mean, tell you something about the politicians? So, I mean, because we're finally we're trying to understand, should we believe in them, should we take them seriously, or should we just ignore this because this is, like I said, the heat of the moment? You know, you're right. In one sense, it's, it's the equivalent of, uh, I've, I've realized lately that following somebody on, uh, on Twitter for two, three months, tells you a lot about that person in terms of, you know, where they're coming from. And this is the equivalent of that in that sense that that it, it sort of tell, it tells you how that how that person is thinking. Uh, the, the problem here is that not a lot of uh, the, uh, the people in the fray, uh, you know, usually end up bec uh, being very different from each other because of, uh, because of the way Conduct themselves. Right. Yeah. Uh, I ask, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I think there, are, there is a distinction to be made. Mm. So, for instance, Gulpanag and Kiran Khair, mm. the exchanges that have happened mm. between them on social media, you can call them mean. Mm. You know, I mean, mm. it's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it, but what Imran Masood says mm. about Narendra Modi that we should cut him up into 40 pieces or 400 mm. pieces, that is not mean. Mm. That is that's taking an outright it, threat. It's an outright threat. Yeah. And I think what is happening, and that's really the danger mm. that politicians and across parties mm. are sometimes taking the level, uh, trying to whip up a frenzy mm. which borders mm. on, you know, I mean, you're almost asking people to take up to violent means. Right. So That's, no, the, that's which, the worry. Which also brings me to my second question and that's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Saurabh, I think, alluded to that. So, we are in a world where things are being uh, picked up and amplified via social media very, very uh, aggressively, right? So, uh, and I have, let me come first put that question to you and then I'll come there. Uh, you know, do people not realize, I mean, after all, summer is setting in, right? I mean, yeah. it, is, it is tough being there uh, in the heat and dust of election, uh, electioneering and election battles. Do people perhaps not realize that uh, their statements could be plucked out from, you know, some corner of uh, a state in, uh, you know, in a maidan and suddenly broadcast and amplified all over the country uh, on social media, picked up, regurgitated, uh, you know, thrown up again and again and again? I think they do realize. I think uh, there is the election commission beyond which, you know, I mean, yeah. Imran Masood went behind bars yeah. for 14 days. Yeah. I think it's about sensibilities. Mm. The politicians also sharp enough to realize what the sensibilities of their electorate is mm. and the kind of vote banks that they are appealing to mm. in many ways. Mm. So whether it is A party or B, the level you'll find mm. is that and where the, where the contest is more keen or more level, hmm. uh, you know, the, the the level of discourse also gets sharper hmm. and more pointed and hmm. perhaps even repulsive. Hmm. I think that's really becoming the trend. Now, the only thing I want to say is perhaps a lot of this existed because even now, while the Indian voters are very mature hmm. and they vote for whoever they think is right, hmm. but the level of education and understanding is still pretty low hmm. in the sense of the debate, hmm. not in terms of the voting. Right, excellent. I think good point. So let's come back now to uh, Prathna and sort of Prathna. Let me begin with you. I is it that uh, voters are still not uh, zeroing in, zeroing in on, or uh, understanding the real debate on focusing on the real issues that matter to all of us? Yes, definitely. You know, uh, 
I mean, uh, there are young voters this time. I think, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, the highest number of young voters will be voting this time. I mean, the uh, the, the politicians or the candidates should uh, should be very conscious when they uh, when they go out for public rallies, and they should understand that not everyone is a fool. You know, everyone is not a fool, and they should come up with some uh, real issue based uh, 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 based public rallies. Not not just talk about uh, secularism. Not just talk about you know. Let's do this to Modi. Let's do this to uh, some X Y Z. Let's do this to A A B C. I mean, yeah, it's very important to be like I said. I've been uh, saying this from the very beginning of the show. Let's be very responsible. Be a responsible. Uh, uh, be a responsible candidate and don't take your voters for granted. I mean, they are not fool. They are not fool. They can make it out from your personality, from your uh, kind of. Uh, 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 delivery in your the public rallies that yes this person is me dumb hai he has something he he can prove it to us if we vote for him he'll definitely do something for us if not 100% yes it. definitely 10 to 20 percent can be expected from this particular candidate so it is very important you know uh, don't just go for abusive languages and um, uh, you, uh, you know uh, bring out something right. which is not important so, Sarab, uh, in a public rally let me uh, rally ask you this question Yeah, so Sarab, let me ask you this question: From where you are, and I don't know if you attended any rallies of late, uh, do you feel that uh, voters are now smart enough to see through what politicians are saying uh, and some of the things that they are saying in in the context of our discussion today, which is really to get abusive and vitriolic? Well, well, well the thing is, the uh, let's understand one thing: most of these comments are made by politicians to their to their to the to the to the support group to to people who think. Uh, who, who who think are the are the are the most steadfast supporters, and 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 they're playing to the gallery there. So they obviously think that this is a message. This, these sorts of things are messages that will will be well well received, and 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 you know bolster the support that they already have. So you know if you look at it from that point of view, I don't think that most of their own you know the 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 people they're talking to, the people they're 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 talking to are going to. Going to be very upset about uh, about uh, anything uh, that they're saying, really, because you know if they're talking to their own supporters, right? Uh, well, this is what the supporter wants to hear. Right. Okay. Ayaz, uh, politicians are really saying what their supporters want to hear. Yeah. Right. So clearly, I mean, this also says that they are focused on their immediate constituency or immediate group, which is obviously the the people who are sitting there. So obviously, and we sitting here in Mumbai and Delhi can obviously not think and uh, feel for the same language and nuances, perhaps as the politician does, which may include abuse as well. Absolutely, I think we are missing the atmospherics. Yeah, you know, when you're <laughs> there in the in the battle itself and yeah. the constituency. But there are two aspects to Because it. This is war, after all. It is, it is war, and as you head closer to the elections, yeah. it's getting shriller. Yeah. So there is, you know, what uh, we heard now that playing to the gallery. Sometimes yeah. it can get trite, like we yeah. saw the exchange between Akhilesh Yadav and. Uh, yeah. Narendra Modi yeah. says, "I've sent lions from Gir to your thing, to yeah. UP, yeah. and you've caged them, but you can't cage Gujarat lions." Yeah. And he says, "No, but you know something about high enough." So that, <laughs> you know, the, the jibes, the sparring. Yeah. That's some, not some of it is fine. I some think of it at is least fine. it lightens it the atmosphere. Color, yeah. Yeah. You know, but when it gets to invective, mm. which leads almost incites people yeah. into violence, mm. I think that's where it gets serious. Yeah. Now, is the electorate wise enough? to reject that is the issue mm. i think as yet indian elections have been driven very strongly by emotional pitch an emotional pitch mm. and to raise it to a crescendo i think the level of discourse is reaching bootless level correct that's what's happened and and that's an important point that you made right i mean you know uh, i think we also fear somewhere that when politicians make statements like this they can actually uh, arouse people to do things which and be harmful and that has happened in the past it's happened in the past i mean i think it's pretty clear that most such conflagrations or conflagrations have been driven by uh, you know rabble rousing politicians or people in political power absolutely in the past i'm talking about the riots and so on so when it becomes very rabid mm. and that's when it 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 becomes dangerous yeah. it just doesn't become dangerous for that particular constituency yeah. but it becomes dangerous for the country as a whole right and i think that's where i don't know what the recourse is who can step in mm. Surely the law agencies can step in there as they are, as, as they, they are, are yeah. as they are. Yeah. But for 
people to reject it i need i think it needs a little more enlightenment in terms of education and maturity levels going up right no but i i think the fact is that we need to be very concerned about it because it is not just about uh, dismissing a statement being made in the heat and dust of an election battle but it's about what that statement can actually do to people's minds because we've suffered in the past uh, thanks to maybe some statements being made somewhere and people getting aroused you know i, I don't think i mean go it might seem a little uh, strange to say this but we can't absolve ourselves in the mm. media i think Hmm. the nature of media is that you pit one against the other and see what happens because especially in this age of television it's all become a lot more theatrical Correct. than it yeah. used to be in the past right so these things are played up and they also then you know if i'm watching it as another uh, c- candidate hmm. and i'm saying if this is kosher when i go out and give a speech right. i'm also trying to take you know extend the envelopes uh, a right. little further so pratna you talked about uh, you know the role of media in this so what do you feel i mean you know so one is we talked about the candidates uh, sitting where they are or standing where they are and saying what they are uh, what about the role of media i mean how much is that amplifying it, this whole problem and the statements that are being made is it being made worse than what it is already Yes, uh, uh, definitely. You know, uh, like a, like I said, a candidate who who belongs to a small town, a small rural area, now he or she understands that yes, mera ye rally na aaj live hone wala hai. This is what they speak. <laughs> live hone wala hai. Yeah. So I mean, jitna ho sake na, uh, thoda sa ye uh, let, let's get famous overnight. Then only you'll get a bashing on your back and your supporters. Ah, aaj ye tumne ye bol liya, bahut acha kya. And see, all of you are there all over. Of the, uh of the, in you know every hindi english the assamese bengali news channels because you are doing this and you are speaking out uh, about somebody who is like um, a, a big shot a high profile candidate so they they have that that kind of mentality you know ha chalo bol dete hai to we'll get the limelight and people will like me like um, uh, uh, like the other guest said you know uh, uh, they speak because their supporters would love to hear something against that partic- particular candidate or particular opposite opposition leader sir uh, let me put that question to you what do you think about uh, the role of media in presenting amplifying disseminating the kind of stuff that's happening today in the i mean when we're really talking about politicians who are abusive yeah it's 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 a bit like terrorism isn't it i mean uh, media publicity is the lifeblood of uh, oxygen of this sort of uh, behavior right and, and you know there's not a lot that media can do about it you know in terms of you know they can't they, they can't really use not to cover it but the thing is that um, you know ultimately it's it's as as i as i mentioned uh, sometime by it's actually up to the, the 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 wisdom of the voter you know we have to get a sort of an electorate that gets turned off automatically when it hear, sees this kind of behavior when it hears about that and you know i i don't think for there yet as far as the media is concerned uh, uh you know how i i really don't see how they can not report uh what 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 is outrageous behavior on the part of politicians who are running for election in this country right no i think sir the question is is there an amplification which is distorting it i, I don't think we are saying should they report or not report of course they should report but is there a certain amplification happening from your point of view as you said as a viewer or as a uh, as a, a reg- average citizen and watch it well well where well, yeah definitely there is there is an amplification um surrounding surrounding the entire incident in the city, surrounding this entire behavior because it's 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 something that that i guess in one sense the media may, uh, you know it it sort of sets the agenda for the day uh, in terms of television news it, it it's it, it they, they they've got they've got what, they know what they have to do that that particular day and 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 so uh, maybe in one sense it, it makes life easier mm-hmm. for for media it's it's easier to you know harangue and hammer on, on one particular issue uh, sure it it might be uh, you know uh, an issue that generates outrage but i mean they you know this, this devotion of all your air time to one particular thing can can really you know as you're saying amplify the issue to something beyond what it deserves right uh, right so uh, uh, this hold your thoughts sir uh, i as you know so we've uh, interesting thoughts i mean so sarob is also a journalist i mean yeah. he's the editor of uh, delhi darbar uh, 
uh, Pratna has been joining us from Assam. So we've got views from different parts of the uh, of the country. Yeah. So is there a is there a sort of consensus you feel now uh, across India about the way we view our politicians and maybe to some extent are indifferent to their utterances, so to speak, or is this something that's again sort of regionally divisive or regionally divided? You know, I think it's a little more complex. I mean, there's no easy, there's no pat answer. The way I see it, Govind, is one is that uh, look. Elections are not driven only by cold logic, they are mm. also driven by sentiment. Mm. The, the emotional pitch is inevitable and mm. wherever you look at it. Mm. Now is that emotional pitch based on issues mm. that are crucial mm. or is it something that is just there to whip up a frenzy? Mm. I think that's where we are facing, I think, mm. the problem. The biggest so challenge, for, yeah. So mm. for, the, for instance, there are certain parties in India mm. which have occupied a space mm. where if they don't raise it to that level, mm. they are goners. Mm. You like know? for example? Like for example the Shiv Sena okay. or the MNS. Mm. Their whole constituency depends on a certain kind of, you, I won't call mm. it subdued, but mm. it's definitely covert militancy. Yeah. So otherwise, there is no reason for them to exist. exist. Yeah. That becomes a problem. Mm. And they have to go out and appeal in a certain way. Mm. I think also in India, for too long, and perhaps this is a very serious issue going ahead, mm. how we shape up as a nation, mm. that there is as far as I can remember, in the last 25-30 years, mm. the polarization has been very strongly on religious grounds. Right. The minute that kind of, you know, doesn't vanish, but it at least diminishes, mm. you'll find other issues being played up. Mm. You can't go into too much of a frenzy and, you know, invective mm. if it is about jobs. Correct. Yeah. But if it is about religion, yeah. then it can lead to all kinds of things. Right. So that's really the last question uh, I asked and I'm going to start with uh, Pratna in Guwahati and uh, Saurabh who's are, is joining us from Delhi. Uh, Pratna, let me begin with you. So what are you, or what are we really voting for? I mean, I know we started by asking, will you vote for abusive politicians? So let's put that question aside for now. What are we really voting for today uh, as, uh, as India, as young India, a constituency that you represent uh, as I can see? So why don't you start off Pratna? Yes, uh, definitely. You know, I'm going to vote. I'm going to be a, um, a responsible citizen of uh, the country. I'm going to vote, but uh, I'm not going to vote uh, for these abusive uh, uh, candidates or the uh, for the politicians. I, I am looking for a better India. I'm looking for a concrete uh, development India. I mean, uh, as a woman, I need security. I need safety on the street. As a woman, um, not as, not only as a woman, as a citizen of the country, I need uh, uh, the future uh, our generation to, you know, uh, have a better place to live in. Not just talk about Hindus, not just talk about Muslims, majority, minority. I, I, I'm sick of this kind of uh, languages being used by our politicians. I'm sick of uh, these kind of lectures and not and kibazis. I would love uh, uh, to have a government who really understands the real problem of uh, their voters yeah. and they value human welfare. Right. You know? Saurabh? Yeah, see, uh, ultimately this kind of behavior is, is really an appeal to emotion rather than to logic. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's actually up to the voter to decide uh, what he wants to entertain. If, 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 if he'd rather sort of uh, focus on issues of, uh, that, that affect him in terms of the emotional uh, hysteria or frenzy that is whipped up, which, is, which actually largely appeals only to that, to that you know, smaller lunatic fringe uh, of, 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 a, of a politician support group. I, I, I think I think the problem will, will uh, sort of sort of go down a lot if, if you start you know entertaining appeals to logic more than appeals to emotion. Okay, that's a uh, optimistic note to end on. Are you as optimistic as you? No, I think uh, look, it's the process of evolution, democracy, and you know these things we find even in more established right. democracies or more educated mm -hmm. democracies. I think in a sense this is a watershed election because we may be on the threshold for a slightly better discourse in the forthcoming elections. Depends on how the elections mm. pan out, we'll have to wait and see. Mm. But I think that, you know, if people view back mm. sensibly, they might find that there are a lot of things which are absolutely unnecessary, mm. avoidable. Mm. And therefore, mm. you can get the same results or similar results without you know, recourse to uh, gutter abuse. level politics. Right, abuse. absolutely. And that's a, that's a fine note to end on. I think the message to politicians is very clear that uh, we don't want to hear that abuse. We would rather 
hear you debate on logic, on real issues and on issues that will define the future of this country and not uh, en engage as Ayaz says in, uh, in uh, gutter level debates. And that's really the message from us here at the India Hangout. Thanks for watching. We are going to be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Join in.